Any questions on this while I've got y'all here? Yes. How often would you recommend to have an MRI done? Well, you certainly need it at the beginning when you first have your your disease starts, your pain starts, mm -hmm. and then I do one within six months of when I do surgery. So if I see somebody who's had their pain for two or three years, which is fairly typical, and they haven't had an MRI in the last six months, then I'll repeat the MRI before I operate on them. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I'll send them to an oral surgeon just to get one last check and sometimes I'll do a <coughs> CT scan of the maxilla and mandible to make if, if they have V2 or V3 pain to make sure we're not dealing with, you know, everybody's had dental work. Yeah. Everybody's had a couple of teeth pulled. A root, maybe root canal, root canal, root canal, extraction, 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 you know, and they still got the pain. And the dentist and the oral surgeon are just trying to do good. And so, you know, it's, it's always possible though <coughs> unlikely, but, uh, but possible, so I look for it to see is there some ruminating abscess in the, or a retained root, I found a retained root once, not a, wasn't trigeminal neuralgia at all, it was a retained root from an extraction. And um, and so, I didn't get to do the surgery, but the patient got well when the oral surgeon <laughs> drilled the root out. Mm -hmm. So the, the key is to get somebody to find the real source of the pain. Um, now, if we, if, you, if I tweak my nose just right, it'll change. Do I do next? No, I was hitting the button on the left here. Uh doesn't work for you. I've got the batteries dead. Why don't we just do this? Page down. Okay, here you go. We got it. Yeah, turn her off there. Okay. I will just do it this way. I'll, I'll do it on here. So, uh, treatment options medical destructive and decompression. I mean, you can group it, every, anything that you're going to do, you can group. So, the medical. Um, Tegretol, Dilantin, Neurontin, Lyrica, I mean, Keppra, whatever the neurologist bag has up there. Baclofen is not a, um, it of course, is not a neurolip. It's not one we use to decrease. It's, one, it's a drug we use for seizures. And it's the L form of the baclofen that works. Back, the, the chemical compound is, comes in right and left handed. And there was a, uh, 30 years ago, there was a, a attempt to, develop L-baclofen, pure L-baclofen, and they said, well, this is too expensive, we'll just give them twice the dose of L and R baclofen. You know, so it comes out in the process. But that does help, and it augments neuroleptics, and sometimes if one neuroleptic doesn't work, we add a second one. And, you know, there are so many side effects to most of them that the usual course that I've seen is patients respond to the neuroleptics, and then for one reason or another, they, they start dropping their hemoglobin or they get toxic on the neuroleptics or then sometimes the pain gets so bad that even the neuroleptics won't manage it. And then we end up uh, fixing it. So um, chronic narcotics are really a, a dark pit to fall into with, uh, with chronic you know, narcotics or a dark pit to chronic pain. So here, destructive lesions, the um, uh, Bill Sweet, you know, the, uh, was the neurosurgeon who, who started doing radiofrequency, who championed the radiofrequency lesion. And um, uh, he, one of the, the local doctors he trained was Dr. Burke. He also trained John Too, who went to Cincinnati. And for a long time, uh, my boss in Pittsburgh, uh, Janetta and Too, were at odds on what was the what was the best treatment for trigeminal neuralgia? Should it be radiofrequency? Should it be microvascular decompression? What? And finally, Dr. Tu, whom I know extremely well, came around and said, well, you know, PJ, you're right. Uh, microvascular decompression is the best way to go because it's curative. It's not destructive. 
So balloon compression uh, out of Chicago. Uh, Jeff Brown has championed that, although he didn't develop it. And uh, you know that in the radio frequency rhizotomy, it's not really a needle; it's a trocar. It's uh, almost an eighth of an inch in diameter, put up through the base of the skull, and turn the current. You know, with uh, turn the current up. I know of a number of deaths from that procedure. You know, it's right near the carotid artery. Uh, I've seen. I saw a really nice lady who had who had cranial nerve palsies. The doctor.